Come on, pal. It's, it's camera shy. Just look away, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Oh, I gotta stop welding in volleys. <laughs> Still welding in volleys. Welcome back. I thought I'd start this episode the same way I ended the last one. I have been home. I have showered. I have done other things. I had a whole weekend. It was wonderful. Thanks for asking. But now that we've got this here, we need to, come on. <sighs> Fill in this. So I'll put this back in, take you around the side and I've got a pretty good idea of how I'm gonna do this. And I think we're gonna use the off cut that was on this panel around here, like the second bit of that to go in there. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna take you in the fuel hole and I'll be pointing to things and explaining it. So, this right here, oh, this cut right here is the E30. This is the one that we just made. I'm gonna use this bit off of this one, cut it out, I'll set it up so it's maybe 10 mil off of the one that I made in the last episode. And then I'm just gonna use sheet steel to patch up to it and back to the chassis. Let's cut this one up, get it into position, and then we can make a cardboard template of the patch panels that we need. The piece, and look, more spot welds. Oh, so good. Hopefully that makes sense. I've left this long because I may be able to just fold that down to meet where I've cut on the E30 wheel arch. I need to offer this back up and I should be able to get that kind of in position from the inside of the wheel arch. Mark out where I need to put the fold and then get it into the position that it needs to be then cardboard template everything around it. And I reckon it's probably gonna be done out of three separate pieces uh, and a little bit of panel beading in there, but it'll still look pretty good. And we should still have plenty of room to get the fuel filler neck in there. It comes, goes down on quite a bit of an angle. I've taken off the rear quarter. After the last episode, a subscriber called Glenn, thank you very much for reaching out messaged me saying that if the rear quarter isn't lining up or has a large gap where it's meeting the chassis, that the wheel arch could be in the wrong spot. I'm always one to heed warnings because if I don't listen, he'll probably be right. And even if I do listen, he's still probably right. So I think the best course of action is mark out where it is sitting so I have a good idea take it off, get all of the welds out of the way. And then from there, I'll have better access to make this inner part of the wheel arch without this on, and it's probably in the wrong spot anyway. So I'll take this off. We've got that patch and that patch. This plate might be able to fold down a little bit. I was looking at this for a fair bit of time yesterday and I just couldn't work out the process of how I needed to do everything. I've gone home, had a peanut butter sandwich, slept on it, and I've got a much better idea of how we're gonna do it. I've done some marks on this panel that are gonna need to get cut out that then gets that sitting nice and neatly. So we're not touching. We've got a little bit of an air gap and we can put a little bit of foam in there just so they don't rub on each other. Once I cut them out, this is the template, the lower cardboard template. I've already cut it out. 
I've gotten the radius from just using a paint can to get the radius nice and clean and neat. And that is very close to what it needs to be. When it comes to welding it in, we can kind of manipulate it into the exact shape we're gonna need for it. I've marked this line on this lower panel or on the rounded panel. I can cut that off. I can then weld this piece in over the top and I've left it long up here, so I should be able to put some cuts in there and then just form it to a nice, like rounded ball kind of shape. So then we're still keeping it looking factory, even though this definitely is not. I think I've got these two panels in a point where I can tack it in the corner weld up this back line, start to form it, so then I can get all of this correct. Yeah, <laughs> straight down the foot. Oh, I gotta stop welding in volleys. Not bad, not my best work, but I mean, you're not gonna see this part because the other wheel arch will be covering it. And the inside of here is all gonna get underbodied. So, I mean, look, it ain't the prettiest. I probably still need to clean up some of these, shine a light behind it just to see if there are any cracks in any of the welds. Look, it's a learning experience. And I mean, a year, 18 months ago, I probably can't even get this done. I wasn't happy with it. I spent maybe another 20 minutes, half an hour on it, and it's looking pretty good now. It's still not perfect, but again, it's not gonna be seen on either side. So it fits in there nice and neatly now. I can get a magnet, magnet it on. Once I get it sitting in there nicely, come on, pal. camera shy. Just look away everyone. Yeah, thank you. So now I can get a magnet in position, see if the cardboard template still fits. If not, I'll make another cardboard template so it's spot on, cut it out, get it kind of folded to the right size as far as this radius is concerned, and then we can manipulate it to the other side when it comes to welding it in. All right. I think we're finally at the time where I just want to tack this panel in. I will want to take it out. So it's just a couple of tacks to hold it in there. And then I can really form this other patch, take it out, weld it up, clean all of this up and weld it all in. I think that makes sense. Well, I hope it makes sense to you because it makes sense to me. And even if it doesn't make sense to you in like, I don't know, it'll eventually make sense. You'll see. Check, check, check. Yeah. Double check the sound was on that time. If you're in the market for a helmet, I would not recommend this helmet. The, the locking mechanism just never worked. It always just came down. No matter how hard you tighten it, it just kept coming down. Yeah, I'm not happy with this. Kind of looks like a wheel arch, doesn't it? Kind of. Will by the time I'm finished with it. Check, check. That's pretty good. And like, I know you can't see it or you're not gonna be able to see it once it's installed in the car. I think I'm pretty happy with it. There's gonna be a lot of panel beading and getting the stitches all the way to either end is gonna take a bit of time, but this is good. We have a panel, let's get it attached. I hate this helmet. If anyone's got any good suggestions on helmets, 
I've looked at an ESAB one, but woo, they are expensive. If anyone's got, uh, got any recommendations, let me know. I couldn't keep doing it. I just went out and bought a new one. Let's see how this one goes. I should check. Yeah, okay. Oh, much better. It's not falling down. Oh, baby. All right, where were we up to? This grind function, just wonderful. Oh, that's so much stronger already. Sick. Still welding in volleys. Still burning holes in my socks and my feet. Yow! Helmet, success. Grinding function's great, but you gotta remember to turn it back off. That means I have to go to work. So, I can finish welding this up tomorrow, then clean it up from the inside. I then have a solution to mount the fuel filler neck, then outer wheel arch, rear quarter panel. Woo, good, wonderful, delightful. Gotta go to work. It's the next morning. It's actually Anzac day, so hopefully everyone does their minute of silence. I will be at 11.11, but we need to get this thing welded on. That wheel arch is just sitting there. I have cut the corner off of the big frame and I'm probably gonna need to plate that up just to close that up. But I think it was stopping the outer wheel arch from being forward enough, which was then causing that gapping issue on the rear quarter. I think the next step is marking out this straight line of where the outer wheel arch is compared to the rear panel that we've just made because I've got a lot of overhang that we need to either try and manipulate up or just cut off. I thought I'd show you this is why I need to cut that top face off and the panel that joins the inner wheel arch to this wheel arch needs to go down straight away from that corner. You can see in there, that's the panel that I've just installed and I think it is gonna get in the way a little too much. I'll take the outer wheel arch off just to show you. I do think I have a solution already though. There is quite a bit of a gap that we can kinda get this panel to move up the side sooner so then we have more clearance for a fuel filler neck. What I do have that can do the job is this nifty little offcut from... So I should be able to mark that out, cut across, up and across and then get that so it, it is has even more clearance on the internals there. I've got to clean this panel up. This face needs to end up at the same level as this face. Cleaned up and I mean, it's almost like it was made for it because it kind of was. It... Yeah. <laughs> Bounced. Got me in the exact same spot as yesterday. Check, check. Pretty good, eh? So, we now need to just roll this corner up to meet there. We're gonna trim this flat and then bring this panel up to meet it. We are gonna extend this panel out so we can still use these 
factory spot weld locations. And then we need to fill in this corner just here, weld it on, and we are groovy. One, two. So before I weld this last piece on, I've put the outer wheel arch on, the rear panel on, just to make sure that the gap is still really good on the door and it's closed down the bottom. So this is where it wants to sit. Like I was saying, I had a subscriber message me to make sure that I didn't weld everything together with this door gap really bad. He also mentioned that I should offer up the rear quarter and then just chuck some tech screws through just to keep it in the same place. So then it's all good. But I mean, look at that. How good does that look? What a patchwork panel that was. So I'm gonna weld this last piece on. Then I've got over here, the outer wheel arch from the second hand M3 panels that I had. And I need to replicate this little bracket right here, because this is what holds on the, what's it called? Dang it, fuel filler neck. This is what holds on the fuel filler neck. So I need to remake one of those, weld that into the patchwork panel, and then I can do the outer wheel arch and the rear quarter, and then that is done. I think I'm gonna call the video here. I've got a bit of a rule that I never do anything critical at the end of the day. And we're getting to the point where it's outer wheel arch on and rear quarter panel on. And after waiting 16 months, as much as like we cut it up immediately, I knew exactly what I was doing and I would prefer to go away, have the weekend, come back and make sure that I do all of this spot on. I don't wanna mess it up because I'm not gonna get another one. In one of the previous episodes, I showed a artist's rendition of a crab driving the ute. Now, he's gotten back to me. We've got more of a final finish. I'm really happy with how it came out and it's part of the merch store that will be slowly, slowly getting all of the bits and pieces. I don't wanna drip feed parts in there because if someone's ordering from overseas, I don't want them to order something and then something come in the shop next time or a, a day or two later and then go, well, I don't want to pay for shipping again. So trying to get a bunch of products in there all at once so you can flip through, get all of the options and uh, get whatever you want at the same time. Here's the picture that we've got. So I'm going to do a giveaway, but it's going to be a little bit different this time. It's not going to be at random. You guys are going to pick who gets the t-shirt. And the drawing I've gotten made up is for a saying I've got, you've got to lift rocks to find crabs. And it's a bit of, you've got to try to succeed. You're sometimes going to fail. You've got to ask questions to find answers. So it's one of those really stupid sayings that to me has a large amount of meaning. Deciding to build this car was lifting a gigantic rock. And I've been bitten. Rear quarter panel was the the epitome of getting bitten after lifting a rock. So tell me in the description a rock that you lifted recently that either went good or bad. And the winner is gonna be drawn in four episodes time. So I think we're up to episode 28. So we're in episode 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. 
The comment with the most likes by the time episode 33 has come out, I'll send out one of the t-shirts with, with the crab lifting the rock, driving the E30 ute. In the next episode, we are going to attach the rear quarter panel. Once that happens, we can start working out how we're gonna get to the rear strut towers and we can start attaching all of the other panels. If you wanna support the channel, check out the Patreon. Slowly building a pretty good community there. I do all of my updates, so the Patreons have been getting pictures, got the picture of the crab first, got updates of all of this and how it's getting built. If not, just remember, keep lifting rocks, keep finding crabs. I'll catch you in the next one. So